Twitter attacks the First Amendment, and Vin finally agrees with Kamala Harris? Let's talk about it, y'all. Middle America. Well, <sighs> Michelle Carter, who encouraged her boyfriend to kill himself, was released from prison early. The 23-year-old served 11 months of her 15-month prison sentence after she was convicted of involuntary manslaughter of Conroy, for Conrad Roy's death. Now, you might not have been familiar with the story. Conrad Roy was a young man, teenager, uh, had some suicidal ideation, and Miss Roy continuously encouraged that suicidal ideation to the point where the kid killed himself. She kept encouraging him to kill himself, and he did, and the texts were recovered, and then she was sent to prison. Now, some of you are saying, uh, I think we got the wrong video here because we're talking about Twitter banning Trump. No, it's the right video. Uh, the judge who gave that young lady a 15-month sentence, you know what's interesting? I didn't hear any protests about uh, free speech there. There is not a single protest about free speech for that young lady. Why? Because all of us know instinctively, even if you're not familiar with the law and the, uh, the, uh, the, the inner machinations of uh, the First Amendment, all of us know instinctively that when you have a mentally unstable person on a bridge and they're about to jump off, uh, the person who says, no, don't jump, we'll do whatever we can to help you, is a good person. And the person on the other side that's saying, jump, jump, nobody wants you here, is a bad person. And that person, nobody would have a problem if somebody rolled up and removed that person from that bridge to preserve the life of the person about to jump off. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Trump cost the lives of five people two days ago. He did. This is directly on him. That's a fact. Ashley, Babbitt, and uh, the officer and the three other people that died with them that day would not have died were it not for Donald J. Trump. That's a fact. This man encouraged riotous, seditious behavior. He encouraged a soft coup and an insurrection. Yes, he did. Mr. Trump knows that there are many, now I'm going to make a distinction here. I'm saying many. There are many in his base or in his constituency who are mentally unstable, almost to the point of nihilistically suicidal, who have delusions of grandeur, of being part of some neo-revolutionary movement of which he is the head of. And he knows that those people are completely and totally unstable. And that is, I do not believe the majority of Trump supporters. I believe the majority of Trump supporters are basically people who uh, felt like, hey, let's give this guy a shot, he's an outsider. Or people like Leah, who's a very level-headed, even-keeled Trump supporter who uh, knows the difference between A and B. However, um, it is the responsibility of you stable Trump supporters to get the other ones in line. The problem is the other ones will kill you. They'll call you a traitor and bash your head in with a, uh, with a fire extinguisher, which is how Officer Brian Sicknick left this world. They cornered brother, bashed his head in, he escaped with his life temporarily, and then collapsed at the precinct. Life support, dead. He's dead now. His family's burying him. Weren't we supposed to be black in the blue? That's a different discussion. But there have been a constituency within the Trump tribe who will constantly make a religion out of not holding this man accountable for the things that he says. And some teenage girl in Massachusetts was held to a higher standard for her speech. 
some teenage girl who I literally just forgot her name after I said it. I don't know who she is, and I don't know. Uh, uh, this girl was held to a higher standard than the most powerful human being on the planet that had 88 million followers on Twitter. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, what Mr. Trump did um, at the uh, a couple days ago, in my mind, is criminal. In my mind, is uh, uh, involuntary manslaughter, five counts. They ought, to, they ought to charge this man with involuntary manslaughter at least for five counts. And I know, I know, people are going to say, whoa, Vin, that's over the line, what about free speech? All of us know that there are limits to free speech. You cannot yell fire in a crowded theater. You cannot encourage a suicidal person on the bridge to jump over the bridge. If your boyfriend is saying that he's going to kill himself and he sets a date and you constantly egg him on to do it, you cannot do that in America and get away with it. And by the way, what happened to all you libertarians? Aren't you people, free market people? Don't you believe in free market capitalism? Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all those platforms are privately owned platforms started by American citizens. They get to decide who's on their property and who isn't. This is not even a, uh, this, this, is, this is not a government initiated free speech closure. This is a private company saying we do not want to be party to a guy who is uniquely capable of causing great harm to this country. The Founding Fathers, when they were drafting the Articles, and they were drafting the Bill of Rights, and they were drafting the Constitution, had no concept of technology like Twitter and the absolute insanity that it can bring to the world. And I'm sorry, but I'm not a guy that big tech likes. I speak out against abortion explicitly and often, I push out a Christian worldview without apology explicitly and often. This particular forum, if I say something that's against Trump, they will promote it and I will get a nice little green dollar sign. Did you know that uh, I, I published a video last year about Candace Owens when she supposedly promoted Hitler and I made it look like I was criticizing her. Uh, YouTube cycled my thing to like 22,000 people. Uh, yesterday, you know, when I posted the live the live stream about uh, the 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 people trying to commit the coup a couple days ago, I was I I didn't even think that I was even going to be able to have the thing visible. I was almost certain it was going to be blocked. Not only was it not blocked, but it was green lighted for complete monetization. That never happens on my channel, ever. So I have faced. Discrimination, but you know what? Come here. YouTube is a private company. I'm using their services. They don't owe me anything. I've said this a trillion times. YouTube, Google, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram don't owe me anything. It's free. <laughs> so all this like, oh no, they're going to come for you next. Stop it. Stop it. There's a whole bunch of stuff that I've said and my friends have said and other people have said that I'm sure the big tech people don't like. The difference is Mr. Trump is uniquely capable of doing damage in this country in a way that literally no other homo sapien on the planet has the ability to do. And when he was the president, it was damn near impossible to ban him from Twitter. But he's not the president anymore. If Mike Pence had any real character, they would immediately uh, 25th this guy, get him out of Dodge, and then immediately drop articles to uh, charge this guy with involuntary manslaughter. If this girl had to do some time for one kid, then Mr. Trump needs to do some time for the five people that died a couple days ago. Those are facts. And... Unfortunately, 
my my uh, lovely, beautiful, and I mean that completely, sane, balanced, Trump-supporting friends generally have made a pattern of refusing to hold this man accountable for the things that he has said that have had a deleterious and destructive effect on our country that has created situations where people have taken to the streets and killed one another on camera, you continuously refused to hold this man accountable. Went along and defended it and then said Trump had nothing to do with it and that Trump wasn't responsible with it. We've got a consistent pattern of this guy inciting certain behaviors. And then when those behaviors manifest in death and destruction, he gets to go back and say, hey, I didn't tell anybody to do this. Trump was the one that invited all those people. He was the one that supported the Stop the Steal slogan. I don't think he came up with the slogan, but he definitely supported it. Stop the Steal it implies or explicitly states that Joe Biden is not a democratically elected president and that it was stolen and... How would you stop something like that at the state capitol, Mr. Trump? No, you ginned up, Mr. Trump, all that fury. You ginned up all that fury, and then you let it loose over there. People on your team have already demonstrated that they were willing to pull guns on other Americans uh, in the street uh, why was not the National Guard already there, prepared and ready to go? Hmm? There's a, let me see a valid question. I think that's a valid question. We can, there is a difference between a person who voted for Trump because Hil voting for Hillary was intolerable and the lesser of two evils and then voting for a horrible racist like Biden and, and, and another horrible racist like Kamala Harris was, was too much to bear. There are good-natured, well-intentioned people who voted for this man and voted for him again and support him. But there is a segment of people in his constituency that are not mentally stable and he knows it. He knows they're not mentally stable. And he uses them whenever he sees fit to use them. There's a there's a there's a black hole whatever in uh, in the internet. I'm not even gonna name it. But one of the things about if you're ever gonna do some sort of media is that you gotta admit when you're wrong. And look. The Russia stuff was nonsense, in my opinion, and I'll, I'll, I'll go to my grave saying that. So was the Ukraine stuff. But I got a friend by the name of BM Fan. And BM Fan named this specific group. And he said, Vin, they're dangerous, blah, blah, blah. They're worse than this other group. I'm, I'm being very, uh, you know, general here and vague. And the people that know me and know BM Fan know what I'm talking about. He said, Vin, this one group is more dangerous than, than, than this left-wing group. I said, no, that's ridiculous. And he kept telling me over and over, BM Fan has my number, he kept telling me for two years, I'm telling you, Vin, these people are dangerous, they're terrible, blah, blah, blah. Man, stop. This Ashley Babbitt girl, 30-something years old, four tours, I think, 14 years in the Air Force. I went to her Twitter page. And this girl had almost no independent posts, no original posts of her own. She just kept retweeting this. And I'm not naming the, the, this guy. Go do the research yourself. She kept retweeting these crazy people. One of these people was saying that, that, that Pence and other people should be taken into a, like, the firing squad and shot. Like, this, this, is like, this is like real world, like, reverse French Revolution stuff. And this girl radicalized herself with the information from this group and, and basically they were allowed to do this unchecked and she got, she essentially brainwashed herself with this craziness. And she's posting about how the only way to stop it is January 6th and blah, blah, blah. 
and on, I saw the video of her getting shot. Dude had his nine pointed right at her, and what happened? She had her white privilege, and she thought, she's like, yeah, I know he's pointing a gun at me. He ain't gonna shoot me, just like that other lady. They're only gonna shoot at BLM. The fact that Shorty took part in this type of an insurrection and was banging down the doors and, and, and really believed, even with a gun pointed at her face, that she was just gonna be able to stroll through there tells you everything you need to know about white privilege. But that's a separate discussion. Now she's dead. Stop. Stop. If you're pro-Trump, if you, if you wanna sit here and get all defensive and emotional about Trump, stop. She's dead. Stop. She's dead. And you're going to tell me who was the one that brought all those people there? Who was the one who knew that there are radical elements in that group, that the whole damn group itself was radicalized? Mr. Trump, when Kyle Rittenhouse went out and shot those people, he jumped in. Well, that's self-defense. And by the looks of the video, it was self-defense. But why is our president going in and taking sides? Trump had already had the intel. Now, this specific group that BM fan kept telling me about over and over, which I was dead wrong about, I completely underestimated their influence. I completely underestimated um, their ability to get people to self-radicalize. These are dangerous people, man. I've never, ever, ever reported on it, to, to be honest with you. More, I've done more reporting on left-wing violence and all the rest of it than this stuff. But this stuff was way, way, way more insidious and dangerous than, than uh, the other people. The other people, the other group, the group that, you know, whatever, they're at least... They're connected to reality. I disagree with their methodology. They believe that they can use violence to whatever. I disagree with that methodology. But none of these people are strange, weird people. They're extremely intelligent people who understand what's going on, but their solutions are, you know, more Magneto and I'm more Professor X. But these people on the other side, these far, this far right, right conspiracy hub of madness... These people truly believe it. He sent, so I'm, I was venting to him during this whole situation that was happening. He's like, Vin, I told you, bro. I'm like, bro, you told me. And then he sends me the, I couldn't even finish scrolling through it. It's It, it was a Reddit page dedicated to people whose uh, family members have been sucked into this vortex of insanity with this far right conspiracy nonsense. It's heartbreaking stuff. And as I was reading it, I became more and more furious at this man. You mean to tell me some punk kid like BM fan can know who this group is two, three years ago? And you're trying to tell me that Mr. Trump didn't get intelligence reports about these people? He knew! He knew! He knows about those people. He knows about that group. And he also knows that these people are ready, willing, and able to kill people and do all types of other radical, crazy bullshit. He knew that. And he knew that that group was going to be populated two to one in that large mass of humanity when he sent them off into the, into, the, into the Capitol building. You cannot tell me that. I've been saying this from the beginning on the channel. Mr. Trump, he's a lot of things, but he's not dumb. He's not dumb. He is massively intelligent and he's massively calculated. I've been saying that from the beginning. So unless you're going to tell me that Mr. Trump is an idiot, he had to have known that he had radical members in that audience that were about to do some radical crazy shit. And he got those people ginned up. He sent them off into their into their to their death. And now Ashley is dead. She's dead. Husband's getting a phone call. Dad's getting a phone call. Mom's getting a phone call. Best friend's getting a phone call dead. We're going to have to put her in the ground. And there's another officer. There's an officer also who died. Officer Sicknick. Brian Sicknick dies from injuries in pro-Trump riots. They beat this guy over the head multiple times with a fire extinguisher. He made it to the precinct, collapsed, life support, now he's dead. Are you ever going to hold this man accountable for anything that he says? You know, there's nothing wrong with admitting that you were wrong. 
I say it all the time. Only God is omniscient. So what that means is, if God is omniscient, and he's the only one, that means that there are times when you could be wrong. This mis this this underestimation of the violence of the of the of the alt right, the whatever you want to call it, these conspiracy nuts, whatever you want to call them, I was wrong. I should have reported more and more about it. We should have talked more and more about it. I was wrong. And if you are a person who supported Trump all through this time and never said anything, never held him accountable, listen, I'm about to show you guys a clip from a couple months ago. In this clip, we were watching the Democratic the, the debate between Trump and Biden. I'm not sure if it was where he told the Proud Boys to stand down and stand by. Maybe that was the second debate. But in this debate, the, I think it was Wallace asked Trump. He said, Mr. Trump, um, you, there's, this slew, there's this thing of poll watchers where some of your far-right crazy people are going like being poll watchers and all that. Um, can you, and, and if you lose the election, will you tell people to stay, you know, just, you know, just chill out and accept the results? And Trump encouraged the poll watchers. And I went off. Here's what happened. See, this is the thing that kills me about Trump. We're not even a month removed from Kyle Rittenhouse How killing those people. Even... No, Rob Noxious, I'm not blowing his answer out of proportion. And this is the re this is the thing that gets me about Trump and his acolytes. This was a completely irresponsible move for him to do. And the fact that these people could never hold this man accountable, I don't know. You you want to turn on TV and hear more Americans are shooting each other and killing each other in the streets, bruh? Because that's what's happening. And they never, ever, ever hold this man accountable. This is some dangerous shit, y'all. I actually love the hell out of this country. So I don't like to see my own countrymen hating each other so much that they're willing to kill each other. And if they're doing this shit before the election... So, so, uh... You, you had people in the comment section, come on, man, you're over, you come on, you're, this is dramatic, you're being over dramatic. And what's the last thing I said in the video? This is happening before the election. What do you think is going to happen after? So I didn't underestimate uh, the destructive nature of Trump's language, but what I did underestimate, what I was dead wrong on, was how far and how deluded these people were. These people truly believed that they had the president's support in attacking our Capitol building. They truly believed it. Nobody is going to put their life and freedom at risk. And again, we've seen the videos of the cops gently escorting some of these terrorists down the steps, which I'm glad, by the way, the lady looked like she was in her 70s. And I'm glad that she didn't get the same treatment as the BLM supporting white guy, the octogenarian who the cops slammed on his head, cracked his head open, wouldn't give him medical attention. And then the rest of the crew uh, uh, quit in protest because the guy that assaulted that octogenarian got suspended. So I'm glad that she didn't get treated like that. But there's, uh, there's multiple testimonies of the terrorists that were there and the insurrectionists and the seditionists that were there that talk about how the cops were very conciliatory to them. Now, that's a different subject. But, guys, and this, you, you, you want to see how far this goes. During the Democratic debates, Ms. Kamala Harris, who, to this moment, I cannot stand, and um, I probably will never change my opinion on her, made the very silly suggestion that Twitter needs to permanently ban Mr. Trump. And at the time, I rolled my eyes and said, come on. <laughs> Ridiculous! She's right. Now, look, when Mr. Trump was the president, and I think this was pre-COVID, where he pretty much had a lockstep, he was, he was gonna win, uh, the counter argument was, are you kidding me? The guy's the most influential tweeter on the planet. He's all, if, if you ban him from Twitter, he's the president of the freaking United States of America, and he goes to another platform, all you're going to do is stand up that platform. So this is kind of a nuanced mea culpa, but she's right. 
Mr. Trump, like right now, he needs to be off of every single social media platform possible. Now, he also had, and again, BM fan was, was dropping the science on, on the situation because I was, like I said, I was venting. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And I said, bro, I said, I said, bro, this guy, I, and I'm not going to name him, I'm like, yo, this guy's crazy. This dude's asking for a firing squad, yada, 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 yada. I'm like, yo, he still has a Twitter account? Twitter finally banned this dude. Mr. Trump needs to be banned from every single, at least, for, for the next two years, at least. Get him out. Parlor, you can have him. I, 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 but he's got to go. He cannot be allowed to spew this stuff. Because I'm going to tell you something. What you're seeing in this video where he finally conceded is a guy that's scared to death that he might be in some legal, serious legal trouble. And I believe that Pence and the rest of them said, listen, bruh, if you don't get up there right now and concede, we're going to activate the 25th. You're going to be out of here in shame. And you know how Trump is with his ego. And that's the only thing I believe. That's the reason he came out and said that. And I also think that he's afraid that he's in some legal trouble. So I think he's going to close his freaking mouth and be a good boy for a year or two, and then he's going to go out, once he's in the legal clear, he's going to go back to, to raising all this type of craziness out there. He was able to incite this type of riot, got this girl killed. That's on you. Yes, it is. I don't want to hear, oh, no, 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 they're all adults. They made their own decisions. No, nope, listen, listen. Ladies and gentlemen, when you see a, a suicidal person and they're on a bridge, and there's a guy on the right saying, don't do this. We got people that love you. Whatever it is you need, I will help you. I don't even know you from Adam, but I'll do anything I possibly can to make sure you're okay. And then there's a guy on the left saying, jump, jump. We know instinctively that if that guy jumps, that the dude that was telling him to jump is partially responsible. And we know instinctively that he's an asshole. That's what we know. So Trump knows the profile of these people. He knows that they're all mentally unstable, these people. And again, not all of his supporters. I'm, I'm very well acquainted with one of his supporters from day one. Leanne, she's the most, she's a lot more mentally balanced than I am. I'm talking about the crazy conspiracy people that spend hours and hours radicalizing themselves and getting like 58 guns. The meal team six and the gravy seals who believed that they were going to overthrow uh, America a couple days ago. Those people, he's responsible. You push those people over the edge. Four of them died, and then a cop died. And all these people got to bury their families now while you sit safely by. Yeah, bro, we need to suspend your Twitter, your Facebook, your Instagram, whatever whatever other means you have of, of pumping out this bullshit needs to be suspended. Now, I don't want to hear about free speech. I want to hear it. You cannot yell fire in a crowded theater. You can't do that. I cannot get on this channel and dox your name and your address and then tell people to go to your place and end your life. And let me, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna say that. I can't do that and not expect to hear a knock on my door. You can't do that. Now, you don't get free speech to incite riots and, and incite all these types of things, and then all these people end up dead, and then you just get to cruise on and go on with your life. Nah, bro, you don't get to do that, bro. Get, you're out. You're out. And you know, look, man, I, I'm, a, I'm a big free speech guy. We got something going on on the Middle America page right now, back and forth, blah, blah, blah. Um, nobody believes in absolute free speech. Nobody. Secondly, this is a private company. This is the, the, Twitter is not federal property. Facebook is not federal property. Aren't you guys capitalists? Don't you believe in the free market? Don't you believe in private ownership? Zuckerberg and the rest of these people can decide who's on their platform and who is. Facts. That's a fact. And he needs to be gone. He does not need to be around contributing to uh, the, the discussion anymore. He needs to go and we need to not hear from him and we just need to completely black him out. And he's probably going to end up in some underground bunker somewhere with, with a bunch of other, you know, whatever. And that's fine. But as far as the major platforms, he needs to go. 100,000%.
And all of us got to take stock in ourselves and what we put out there. It's got to be factual. As best as you possibly can. Holy moly. Ashley Babbitt, I think her name is. Rest in peace to her. The names of the, um, the other victims that um, Mr. Trump caused the death of have not been released. Um, other than uh, Officer Brian Sicknick. And now the irony of all of this is... Trump sent those people to their deaths to serve his ego because he couldn't deal with the fact that he lost to Joe Biden. And in so doing, has completely cemented his legacy forever. Everything that he has ever done for this country will be forgotten, and the last two or three days will be the only thing left to remember him by. Unbelievable stuff. Look, guys, this is not about beating up Trump followers or Trump supporters or whatever, whatever. This is simply about loving your country. We're in trouble. This guy is a serious, serious, serious problem. And uh, I hope to God that he just, look, Mr. Trump, I'm sure you, you, you've accomplished a lot of great things as a president. And what you need to now do now is pack it in and go home. Go to Mar-a-Lago. As for the rest of us, love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. Take care of each other. Middle America, we are the media.